Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now in today's video, we're gonna be looking at the IO value of a brushless motor and how it changes as we go from a low voltage all the way up to a high voltage. We're gonna be covering from a 2S LiPo, which is about 7.4 volts, to a 6S LiPo, which is gonna be 22.2 volts. Now, interestingly enough, we're gonna be operating this specific brushless motor very shortly here at its maximum rotational speed, which is gonna come at 22.2 volts. You're gonna be able to listen to this motor scream. Now, it's important to note that every single brushless motor is gonna have an absolute maximum RPM that you should not exceed, and this is gonna be right from the motor manufacturer itself. And this is very important to follow. The reason why this is important is because if you do exceed the maximum value, you you run the risk of permanent damage due to mechanical failure. And that mechanical failure can happen either in the bearings of the motor or it can happen within the rotor where the rotor can possibly fly apart. If this has ever happened to you, you know exactly what that sounds like when the motor locks up due to a mechanical rotor failure. Right now would be a good time to go through some sort of a refresher on IO values. The IO value of a brushless motor is one of the three constants that you typically see on most data sheets or specification sheets for brushless motors. It is the specification that represents the no load current of our brushless motor. The no load current is exactly that. It is the current that is developed or consumed when your brushless motor is brought to speed and under no load. This value is important to us because it is directly related to the efficiency of our brushless motor. The no load current also tells us a little bit about the performance level of the motor. If you see a very high no load current, that motor is typically going to be of a hot wind, where a hot wind is going to be a motor that can pull a lot of current. If you see a lower IO value, something closer to about 0.5, you could expect that this motor is going to operate more commonly at a higher voltage and not at a high current. In fact, it's gonna be at a lower current value. The IO value of our brushless motor really has two primary categories. Overall, it is known as the iron losses of a brushless motor, and it represents the electrical losses, as I simply put it, for a brushless motor, as well as the mechanical losses. Both of these types of losses will be combined as you go and run up that motor to speed. Why? Because the iron losses are happening at the time when the motor is operating at speed, as well as the mechanical losses that is happening at speed. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the values that we get as we go and measure the IO value for a motor from 2 to 6S. Now, as you just saw in those three trials, when we go ahead and increase that voltage up to the next step, the IO value, the current that we're drawing under no load increases as well. And then we go and bring that to the next step by increasing the voltage and IO also comes up. The next question is, does this make sense? Well, it's more simple to understand from a mechanical point of view. So let's consider the mechanical losses that is happening under our iron losses. Mechanical losses come right directly from our bearings, for example. Now there must be some form of lubrication within that bearing that is rotating along with the balls within the bearing. And as those rotate at a slow speed, the ball has to get the lubrication to move out of its way. And this directly translates into some form of friction that is built up in our bearing, even though bearings are used to reduce friction. Now as we go and increase that bearing to a higher speed, that relationship has to happen even quicker. Because we're forced to make it happen quicker, we get a higher amount of friction out of that bearing 
at those higher RPMs that we're spinning the motor at. So yes, it does make sense that we're seeing higher amounts of no load current being consumed at those elevated levels of RPM. And therefore it does make sense that we're getting higher amounts of current being drawn from our battery as we increase the RPM to a higher level. Now, what does this mean for us in our radio controlled applications? Well, there's a couple of ways that we have to look at this. The first one is motor manufacturers only really give you one value specified at one voltage for our constant. And that typically ranges from anywhere around eight volts to 15 volts, where the most common voltage that I've seen is IO values given out at 10 volts. Now for many, this is not ideal. A 10 volt rating for a motor that you're gonna operate on 4S LiPo, which is close to about 15 volts, or even a 22.2 volt LiPo, which is our 6S pack, is very far away from that 10 volt rating. Now here's where you can look at it in two different ways. Now if you're just looking to specify a brushless motor for your application, the IO value at 10 volts is going to be good enough for you. You can easily look at the IO value of a brushless motor and identify whether it's going to be a motor that pulls a high amount of current or a motor that's only capable of pulling a low amount of current. Generally, higher IO values are gonna represent that you can pull a higher amount of current. The second way to look at it is if you're really trying to get an accurate representation of an efficiency calculation that you're going to be making, it is best to use the IO value directly from the actual amount of voltage that you plan to run. If you're doing a theoretical calculation and you're wanting to know the efficiency of a motor, but yet you do not have a way of measuring the amount of current that the motor is going to consume when it's operating at your specified voltage, let's take a look at what happens in that scenario. In this chart, we're able to look at the difference in efficiencies that we get when we use the motor manufacturer's IO value of 2.43 measured at 10 volts versus our own measured value at 3.339 when our radio controlled vehicle is actually going to be operating at the 22.2 volts that this value here was measured at. Now the way that we're gonna go about this is we're gonna look at two different scenarios. We're gonna look at a low current scenario on the top here and a high current scenario on the bottom. Now the way that this chart works is that we calculate the copper losses as well as the iron losses. There is a video on how you can do that as well up on the channel, I'll link it in the description below. And then we go and sum these two losses to get the total losses of our radio controlled model. From here, we can look at the power output which simply just takes the voltage multiplied by the current. This gives us our 333. And then the way that we calculate efficiency is we take the 333, we subtract the total losses out of it, and then we divide that back by the 333. We do that for each case using the 2.43 versus the 3.339 in order to get two different efficiencies. Here you can see that the efficiency of using the 3.339, this is the actual measured value, comes in lower. And this is the more accurate value because we are using what the IO value is directly at the voltage that we intend to run when operating at wide open throttle. The difference in air that we get using this theoretical model is 6.06%, .06%, which translates into a power difference of 20.2 watts, which is really the difference in the total losses. In the next scenario, we look at using a much higher current. Instead of 15 amps, our radio controlled application is gonna be running at 90 amps. All the same values here for resistance as well as the IO value. And then we go and calculate the copper losses based on these new values, which does change a little bit. And then the iron losses actually remains the same. Why? Because we're still operating at the same voltage and we still have the same IO value. So these actually don't change. The difference between them is 20.2 watts. Our total losses, however, increases and the total amount of power output that we get is just shy of 2000 watts. This translates into an efficiency of 94.87% using the motor manufacturer's IO value 
and 93.86% using our own measured value at the specific voltage. The difference here is an efficiency of only 1.01%. Well guys, there you have it. As you go and increase the voltage of your brushless motor, you can expect that the IO value is also going to increase. And if you're making an efficiency calculation for your brushless motor, having the IO value at the typical 10 volts is not going to make a large difference in all cases of your calculation. I hope you were able to learn something in this video. Like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Monday.